I want to talk about the triangulation. Um, so there's obviously now we're talking about math. We're talking about science. We're talking about ancient spirituality. We're talking about consciousness. Uh, we're talking about all of these uh, sacred sorts of um, especially the last thousands of years that from axial ages, the explosion through uh, scientific renaissance and explosion there and scientific method and whatnot, coming together and triangulating on what this nature of reality is. And that I think it's interesting as we were talking about the source code mountain and all these different ways up in exploration, we, we kind of, we, 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 we may have mentioned this slightly um, that could it be that the, uh, that the ancient perennial spiritual wisdom of everything being one integration, everything being one thing, and then also having the small derivations like a calculus of consciousness, there's small derivatives of us, nerve endings, uh, having the conscious agent experiences and interactions and that cause actions to change and whatnot, that, that the triangulation of that and on um, the science that is being pushed uh, from like your conscious agent theory and many others are just pointing at this, the same thing over thousands of years or we're coming to the same thing. And that kind of maybe indicates that there is that one mountaintop with many different paths. I want to, I want to see um, what you think about the, the candy store analogy is very strong. It's, it's very strong. The, the, the candy store um, analogy for the conscious agent experience. And my question would be, would be this. I've, uh, I've, been, I've been struggling with trying to, to understand this, that for thousands of years, there have been ancient spiritualities that have talked about how everything that is possible already is that's what infinity is infinity is everything that is possible it's all the combinatorics that are possible are already happening and and the being beco becoming is the only being so it's just an infinite amount of becoming always eternally happening and that all the combinatorics that exist do. But then there's Kurt Gödel and there's this incompleteness theorem. And there's this idea that it's, it's impossible to ever be everything. It's impossible to ever be all the combinatorics possible. So are we, are we, are we already exploring all of the combinatorics of the infinite candy store always and always will? Um, or can we never explore all of the combinatorics of the infinite candy store and therefore um and 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 maybe um the ouroboros uh, it could i can bring that in as well just that that as we evolve to whatever the godhead attractor is that we're going towards maybe the recursive function is to just continue tasting more of the candy store combinatorics as conscious agents and that's that transcension hypothesis at the godhead that we just go inward for more exploring so take us on that journey of those two options and then on we'll get to that recursive godhead right so girdle when he was only i think years old or 25 years old 25 yep crazy when, he, when 1931 he he did one of the most brilliant things ever in human history. He, he proved his incompleteness theorems. And, and effectively, what he showed was that if you have any set of like axioms, assumptions for a mathematical system that's rich enough to do arithmetic, then he showed that there will always be statements that are true, mathematical statements that are true, you cannot prove from your axioms that, 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 that so these are unprovable truths. They're truths that are unprovable. Now, you can imagine the genius that it would take to prove that there are unprovable truths, what he did. And now if you take those truths that are unprovable and add them to your axioms, you might think, oh, well, then I'm done. But then he proved, no, there will be yet new 
truths that are unprovable within the richer x and so what this means is that there is no end to exploration of mathematical structure it's and it, it this seems to be an, an unending exploration that that even an infinite wisdom could never get around right that, that there's a sense in which you can't ever be smart enough to comprehend the whole thing this is this is pretty deep this is an exploration that in principle appears to never ever be possible to stop in principle. Like, like the infinite um, men, Benoit Mandelbrot fractal zoom. That, that's right. But this is a kind, I mean, there, if you take the, um, the real line from zero to one, there's an infinite number of points, but, yeah. but you can see them all, right? There, there, there's some sense in which it's comprehensible. This is different. This is like, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's unending and so now how it relates to the the consciousness stuff and what you're talking about is um if now i'm again bracketing with respect to a particular theory right so suppose we adopt the theory in which consciousness conscious experiences are fundamental right so then in under that idea mathematical structure is only about one thing consciousness and conscious experiences and in that framework then you would Gödel would be telling us that there's an infinite variety of conscious experiences with an infinite variety of, of different structures, and and that may be a little strange to a lot of people to talk about experiences being structured, mm -hmm. right? But if you if you think about just your experience of of the world around you, there's up, down, left, right, forward, and backward. There's there's a structure, a three dimensional structure to your to your space, and. And there's a structure of color space. It turns out that, for example, red is a little bit closer to orange than it is to blue, right? There's this, there's, there's a closeness relationship that colors have in our, our perceptions. And, and everywhere, there's a field called psychophysics that's been around since 1860. A guy named Gustav Fechner started it. But in that field, what we do is we study conscious experiences and their structure and their structure all over the place. So. All conscious experiences, they're, they're, they're more than mathematics. So no, no conscious experience is just mathematics, but each conscious experience is structured. So I like to think of it as that the conscious experience is to the mathematical structure like the living organism is to its bones. So it's like mathematics is the bones of consciousness. Consciousness is not just its bones. It's it's much richer than that, but it's not less than its bones. <laughs> it, it 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 has to have the bones as well. It, you know, so so what Gödel is telling us it, it, under this theory that consciousness is all there is, that's is fundamental, is that there's this infinite variety of conscious experiences with an infinite variety of structures. So that's what I call Gödel's candy store, because these are now things to be experienced like candies, right? You know, the kid in the candy store is like, let me try this one. Oh, that was great. Now let's try this new experience. Oh, I love chocolate. Well, I like caramel too. And uh, so what Gödel is inviting us in this, in this framework is to say that there's this infinite range of conscious experiences and no consciousness of any type, even the most glorified can ever come to the end of the exploration. And so there will be this endless exploration of all the possible forms of consciousness, and we could actually think of Gödel's theorem as, as telling us that, that what it's about is consciousness learning more and more about itself as it explores more and more of its possibilities, yeah. but it will never end. And, um, and we're all, perhaps, are, quote unquote- We are that, we, we are that. We yeah, tatvam asi, the um, we are that, or um, I and my father are one, yeah. That, that, that's right, and we're exploring it in a particular Minkowski space format with objects in space and time, and this is the particular little, so, but that's what, that fits in with this headset idea. Like, so instead of taking space and time as the final reality, in this bigger girl's candy store picture, it's, no, this headset that, that we've assumed was the final reality is one candy in an unbounding candy store. It's yeah. just one, yeah. and what, what so part of the waking up is to recognize this rookie mistake that we took this chocolate as the only candy in the store. This is the whole thing. It's, it's all about chocolate. Well, no, it's not all about space and time and what's inside space and time. That's just one little headset, one candy in the candy store. Wake up to all the infinite possibilities. Again, 
Club. You mentioned you mentioned this earlier, something like a Walt Disney or a Pixar style imagination, where if you do imagine what it is like to uh, evolve a, a headset that is non-carbon based DNA coded beings in a space time quantum field theory soup of natural selection, that then maybe you can you can envision what other simulated uh, designs of, of realities look like. Uh, and you could even wander just a couple solar systems over and think about what it would be like. Um, you, you could even stay in this universe if you, if you want, and you could explore what, what uh, alternative. So, so does it, does it feel like that then we are already all of the infinite con candy store combinatorics always happening or that we can never be that and we are always endlessly exploring that? Well, Girdle seems to be saying we're endlessly exploring, and and that that you're you're right that we can certainly try to imagine and explore outside of the standard space time kinds of things, um, but there are certain interesting limits to this too that we have right now. So, for example, if I this is one of my favorite examples of this. If I ask you to imagine a specific color that you've never seen before, oh yeah. But does yes. anything happen? What? Mm -hmm. Suppose you're colorblind, right? So you're you're a guy, you're you're red green colorblind, and and so there's this whole range of color experiences that you can't have that you know every almost every woman has and and, and color normal men have. So there's this red green distinction that you don't have. But if I ask a colorblind man to imagine red, well he can't do it, right? He, he, just like you can't imagine a new color, I can't imagine a new color. So if so, there are some really if I can't even imagine one simple color, I, I, I know colors, right? I've had lots mm -hmm. of color experiences, but all my imagination does not allow me to imagine. Go outside the color wheel. Right, yeah, yeah. outside the color wheel, I can't, I can't do it. And, mm -hmm. and yet we know that there are creatures, um, for example, there are some women who have four color receptors, not just three. Mm -hmm. So most of us have you know, a long, medium, and short wavelength cone but these women have apparently two versions of the long wavelength cone and they and in some women they're all four of them are expressed in the retina and when you do careful tests on these women so Kimberly Jameson a, a, um, a, a PhD um, researcher here at UC Irvine who, who I know has she and others have done careful tests these women give clear evidence that they're that that can be interpreted that they're in a richer color world than the rest of us just like us trichromats, we are in a richer world than the colorblind men. These women are in a richer color world than us. So they're having color experiences that I can't even imagine. I, I can't imagine what they, I can imagine abstractly that they're having them, but I can't imagine concretely any one of those experiences. And so that's the limit that we're going to have right now, it appears. Yeah Our understanding of the possibilities. In some sense, we can understand abstractly the possibility of all these realms of all the, all the candies in the candy store. Yeah. But until you taste the candy, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, 4% of people are synesthetes and um, there's creatures that see in the infrared and on the other side on the ultraviolet, like there's a different species umwelt. So the different, um, yeah. So species are wearing different headsets and we could, you know, we can, we took the uh, channel, uh, rhodopsin for optogenetics and we took um the the uh the g green fluorescent protein gfp for the um for other biotech work that we've been using so we've we we're borrowing from headsets uh from like user interfaces to uh, yeah so um this is very good if you can't imagine outside of the color wheel um of our user interface then it's hard to like walt disney or pixar yourself out of uh into like different universe designs as well but um, I think virtual reality does a really good job at trying to slowly, in a sense, kind of like stretch out your color wheel beyond. Because um, when you're when you go in, and these things are just getting more and more indistinguishable, so it, the inevitably it's going to lead to a point where um, where you may be um, spending um, your your 
your eight, eight, 80 years engrossed in the game because we've also hit the longevity escape velocity. So you can now live because we're just home. We're just, we're just, we're just engineering out any of the disease. We're just tuning the car or the plane um, we give uh, to like 15 year old homeostatic capacity of our body over and over again. So you can play for those 80 years and then, and then take it out and then just be like, wow, that was vanilla. That was great. And now it's like back to uh, caramel for now. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think VR will help. Uh, I agree. It'll help stretch our imaginations. It'll help to take us in different places. And I think it will also help um, to understand the possibility that what we assumed was the objective reality space. We, we assumed that space and time and physical objects, the sun and the moon and the stars, these are the absolute ground of, of reality. And, but someone who's actually, you know, the next generation that sort of grows up and spends a lot of the time in, in virtual realities that are just as immersive and compelling as everyday life, it's, it's, got, it's not gonna be, you won't have to be really a genius to take off your headset and just wonder, well, what about this? This is, this yeah. is just another headset. I mean, you, don't have, you won't have to be an Einstein to do that. It'll just sort of be like, duh. You know, of course, it's a possibility. I mean, if, if I can, if I, with this headset, am creating all these worlds that aren't there, then surely I'm creating this world around me and it's not there either. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the creator of it. That whatever the reality is, this is just a headset to that reality. So I think it will really help our imaginations that way. But in terms of concrete imagining of specific new kinds of color or other kinds of experiences, I don't know. Uh, short of taking drugs that sort of, you know, like, you know, open the doors of perceptions in certain raw ways. Um, and maybe meditation could do that. There may be some mm -hmm. technology that will do that. But what we have right now, the, the way that scientists do it is we go there with mathematics. We, we let mathematics take us. So, for example, can you imagine a three-dimensional cube? Sure. Can you imagine a four-dimensional cube? Nothing happens, right? <sighs> Einstein had to be thinking in four dimensions to write down his you know, equations for general relativity. He had to have a four dimensional, but he couldn't visualize it. So the mathematics was allowed Einstein to go where visual imagination couldn't. And now we can go five, six, 10 dimensions in mathematics and we can go there, even though the mathematicians will tell you they can't visualize anything. And yet there's a way that our imaginations are going there because we have this cognitive lever, this tool that takes our, our ability to only concretely imagine three dimensions and leverage that into the abstract ability to work in any number of dimensions, but we can't visualize it. And so that's, so we can use mathematics to explore abstractly what's in Girdle's candy store, but it won't actually let us taste it. Wow. Okay. So we will be able to make all these novel combinatorics of candies. Um, the trick is going to be to enable us to actually taste that. Right. That's right. That's right. Just like you I mean the, the simple problem you, know, you can't you know, imagine a specific color you've never seen before and nothing happens. Yeah. If I if I discover all these new structures that consciousness can have and I say, okay, well, imagine what it's like. Well, you concretely won't be able to do it just like you can't imagine a specific color. So, so what we can do in some sense, what we're getting from the mathematics is, boy, are there all these really, really intriguing candies out there that are beckoning. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm telling you that they're there, but you can't taste them right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's all, there's this, um, there's this, an, an infinite um, catalog of, of, of valence of, of conscious experience that is available of such wild combinatorics that are way beyond our own color wheel and tastes of candies um, that right now we're just talking about, but that nobody has tasted or experienced. And so we want to, we want to just shatter that and, and send lots of conscious agents out to experience that. Right. And that's from this point of view, from this framework in which consciousness is fundamental, that's what consciousness is up to. It's, yeah. it, it's shooting 
all sorts of explorations. And, we're, and you and I are just some of those explorations. We're exploring this particular candy in a particular part of the candy store. And we, we're using Minkowski space and physical objects to do it. Um, and, um, and most of us have no idea that there's anything else, right? This is the only candy in the store and, and, and we're happy. But this is just one of the boundless candies. And, and um, it's, it's fun to wake up to that. It may be frustrating too if, if we sit here and going, but oh, but I can't experience them. <laughs> and by the way, even the mathematicians, uh, based on Gödel's incompleteness theorem, even the mathematicians can't abstractly even begin to explore just the mathematical structures, right? But by the way, this is great job security for mathematics. This is provable job security. This is you will never come to the last theorem, never. So this is, sign up for being a mathematician because you know that you have endless employment. <laughs> AGI will help us uh, create those novel um, theorems that help push the edges further. I want to I want to ask you about um, that Ouroboros. So at does does it then if we are um, creating the the if we if we are a one that is having the um, dissociative, as Bernardo Castro talks about, experience of of the nerve endings that we are having the experience in in the reality that we ourselves have designed and made. That then, um, <clears throat> that we of course must not get lost in the own um, in the own infinite labyrinth of our creation, but we must um, go towards that that whatever attractor of a of a star that we're all in a sense, like orthogenically um, building towards right now. And is that star that we're building towards, is that a recursion? Is that the transcension hypothesis? Is that all of us as conscious agents going through the process of making more experience, like tasting more of the candies in the store. So is our recursive Godhead function to just taste more candies in the infinite store that we will infinitely forever eternally be exploring? Well, that is the kind of idea that, that I'm, I'm pursuing here. So, so absolutely. And, and this, but this question really touches on something that you brought up before, which is that there are many wisdom traditions over thousands of years that have said very, very similar things. And, 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 and in some sense, as a scientist, I'm sort of a Johnny come lately, right? Science is sort of a Johnny come lately to this, but, but the science is, is, is coming along. But, but the kind of answer to the question that you just raised will require that we take all the insights from the wisdom traditions. And then we also take the rigors of the scientific method in terms of theory building and careful testing and bring these together in a, a synergistic interaction 